I've been a content creator here on YouTube since 2018 and one thing I think every creator wants is to look as good as possible in their videos. Even if we want to deny it, when we look good, we feel good, when we look good, we are more confident. In today's video I want to share everything I've learned over the years with you, basically how to get from something like this to something more like this. We will start with some basic information that just about anyone can use, but then we're also going to dive deeper into more complex methods for more advanced creators. So let's get the obvious out of the way first. Take care of yourself, take care of your skin, have a skincare routine if you're into makeup, put makeup on before you start filming. And my personal golden rule, the one I did before starting to film this video, take a shower before you start recording. Yeah, you're not here for that, so let's get straight to the second point. Point two is lighting. Lighting is the most important thing if you want to have a nice skin in your videos. More specifically, I want to introduce you to the concept of hard and soft lighting. This right here is an example of hard lighting. I'm using artificial light, but in a real world scenario, this would be filming a video in direct sunlight. In contrast to this, this is what we call soft lighting. I haven't changed anything, I just bounce at the same light off the wall, creating a much bigger light source and therefore a much softer light. If we compare both images, we can obviously see that my skin looks much better when using the soft light. So what we learn is, the softer the light, the better your skin looks and the more imperfections in your skin are hidden. In order to achieve soft light, the formula is quite simple. The larger the light source in relation to the subject, the softer it is. And in order to create a larger, bigger light source, we have to either bounce it or diffuse it. If you're working with natural light, you can use a natural diffuser. That means recording on a cloudy day like I'm doing right now. But obviously you want to record whenever you want to record and not have to wait for a type of weather condition. So what do you do when there is harsh sunlight? The answer is to diffuse the light. Let's try that right now. So here's the artificial light again. As you can see, it is just blasting on my face. Let's say this is our sunlight. You can take something like a diffuser. This could be a white shower curtain or you can buy diffusing material on Amazon. This costs like five euros, five dollars. So it's actually quite cheap. If I put that in front of me, you can see how much softer the light has gotten since now the light source is this material and it is really close to me so it is big in relation to the subject me yeah i think you can see that okay so now i'm bouncing the light off the wall once again so while natural light is free it is also very limiting so if you plan to record videos indoors i recommend buying a light you are seeing what i can achieve with just one light i can do that every day and my lighting will be consistent um this light in particular is the amaran 200d by aperture but if you're on a budget you can get a godox sl60 i believe which will do exactly the same thing Another thing you can do is add a softbox to a light like this. This is really the easiest setup you can have. That's why most of the YouTubers have a softbox setup. I own multiple softboxes as well because it's just easy to do. But the formula is the same. You just want to have the largest possible light source in relation to your subject. So this was lighting. And before we wrap up this section of the video, I want to show you my favorite way of lighting, which is called book lighting. I told you that in order to achieve the soft light, you have to either bounce the light or diffuse it. But what if we do both? Well, then we get book lighting. This setup stays basically the same. This one light bounces off this wall, but now we will add some diffusion in front of it. So we have the bounce and we have the diffusion. This is actually what I was using at the intro of this video. Give me a second. This is what I had in front of me. This is a diffuser and I'm a build it just in front of me. So here we have it. This is quite possibly the softest light you can have and therefore my skin looks like it looks now. Point three is cameras. So now we're getting into the more technical stuff, into the more advanced stuff. As technology has advanced, our cameras have become clinical. They've become extremely sharp. Now this is a good thing because we get high quality video, but when we are recording persons, all the details these cameras are capturing show all the imperfections in someone's skin. I found three reliable ways to kind of negate this. Number one is filming in a low 
lower resolution. Right now we're filming in 4K on the Sony a7C2 and this now is HD 1080p. The resolution is lower so my skin will be a little bit more blurry and therefore it will look cleaner. So back to 4K. But we don't buy expensive cameras that are capable of 4K to just record in 1080, do we? So let's keep recording in 4K and let's get to the other two points I have. The other one is these cameras oftentimes do in-camera sharpening. You need to turn off this function ASAP. Just scroll through the menus, look at your picture profile and turn the sharpening all the way down. For the entirety of this video, I've been using the picture profile as log free and my sharpening has been on minus seven, which is the lowest configuration. But just to test, let's see how this would look if I turn up the sharpening. So now this is the video with the sharpening applied and you see this doesn't look natural. This will look worse. I have the book lighting still on so it won't look as bad but trust me if you have harsh light and this sharpening on it will look awful. So let's turn that back down again. Lastly the third solution to this problem is to use diffusion filters. So this right here is my black promise filter from Tiffin and if I put this on my lens it should take a little bit of this digital sharpening away. Does this look better than before? You let me know. So finally we come to the most advanced section of this video and it's post-production. I now start to record my screen Um, you should see me and you should see my screen now. There are actually a couple of things that we can do to ensure that our skin looks as good as possible. The first thing I recommend is using the vector scope. I'm using Final Cut Pro so I'll just hit Command and 2 and now I've opened this new workspace. I'm gonna change this just a single one and change change this to vector scope. Yeah, so here we have the vector scope and I'm not going to get too technical, but if we do this, I will just select my skin. Let's do it like this. And here you can see this line. This line is for skin tones. And no matter if you have a lighter skin or you have a darker skin, all human skin tones are on this line. So as you can see, I did film this correctly, but let's, let's change the temperature of my video and the tint. As you can see, if I turn this off, my skin is looking greenish. The problem is if you don't have a good monitor or if you have been looking at your screen the whole day, your vision might be a little bit off and maybe you can see that something is off. So by using the vector scope, if you align this once again, I'm not even gonna look. See, it's not even as I recorded it. Now it should be even better. Okay, let's see what this did. Okay, so you can see this is the original. And this is the corrected one. Not a drastic change, but if we combine everything we have learned today, it will make a drastic change. And the final thing we're going to talk today, let's put it once again on this, but now we select the Luma. These values you see here are called RIE values. And to explain it really simple, zero is blacks and everything up there is the whites, the highlights. So the problem I see with most people is they tend to overexpose the skin. Let's just select my skin once again. So as you can see, the brightest parts of my skin are at 60 RIE. Generally speaking, the skin should be at 45 to 70 RIE. It depends on how dark or how light your skin is. If you have darker skin, your skin tones would be roughly here. If you have like really, really white skin, your skin tones could be here. What we don't wanna see is you putting your skin about 70. This doesn't look natural. And by using the Luma, you can dial this in and make it perfect. So let's see, we want it to be at roughly 60 for my skin, I found out 60. And as you can see, we have a perfectly exposed picture right here. So I really hope this video helped you out. This was a totally unscripted video. I just wanted to create this because I thought I could help a lot of people. And yeah, if you found it helpful, let me know in the comments. If you have further questions, you can also ask me in the comments. And yeah, see you in the next video.